And it is today that I rise from my slumbers in the ashes of the Phoenix. Hello there everybody, this is Questionable Gamer here, aka Brandon, and we are back with another episode finally. Um, it has been a pretty long time. Last time I recorded this was probably back in February, maybe, it might have been March. Um, yeah, so quite a, quite a ways, uh, since I recorded. The last episode was probably, um, uploaded just shortly after this, or before this, I mean, not gonna upload these in weird orders but last it's been a long time since i have recorded this game and um i want to tell you that i've had a lot going on but honestly i haven't had all that much going on um i've actually i've been doing different stuff i haven't been just sitting around not doing anything i've had school which school will be finishing up in a couple of weeks for the year for the school year, at least. it's a, The school year is kind of a weird thing if you think about it. Oh, actually, never mind. I know I know why it is, <laughs> how it is. But other than that, I have I haven't had any sports going on. I did have a band thing that w was going on. Um, what happened with band was... So, like, every four years, my school sends uh, high school band and choir students to Florida... Well, then you have to raise the money to go, and um, so I was there just a couple of weeks ago. I went to Florida, and man, my back is so sunburnt. Like, I'm a pale white kid from the mid east, mid east, <laughs> wow, Midwest. So you can imagine I sunburnt pretty bad. Like my skin is peeling hardcore. Um, I did put sunscreen on a lot, and that was the first time I've ever been to the beach, ever flown anything. And if you're wondering, I play the drums in the band. I play drums, percussion. Um, but yeah, that's that's what has happened recently. I've been kind of pursuing what I've talked about in previous videos. I've been doing musical stuff. Uh, I started an Instagram page where I play music. Um, I play guitar and bass. And a little bit of piano. I just recently, I've had my bass for maybe two or three weeks now. I haven't been doing too much, but if you want to, you can go ahead and follow that Instagram page if you want to see what my musical capabilities are. So that would be Hello I Play Music. Uh, maybe I'll put text right there. I don't want to put it over Ganondorf's beautiful face though. Anyway, let's get onto this game. I'm gonna talk about this. Or oh, I lost her. You, over there, little kid. You must have seen the white gorse. <laughs> I was going to say white ghost. White horse galloped past me just now. Which way did it go? Answer me. Gandorf, fix your voice. So, you think you can protect them from me? You've got guts, kid. So Link pulls out his sword. Eh. Eh. You want a piece of me? Very funny. I like your attitude. Oh shit, man. No, this game stands out so much. Like, for the era that I was in, like, I'm gonna compare this to PlayStation 1, because that's they're the same time era. Time era? Whoa. Do you realize who you're dealing with? Let me do it after this cutscene, because I'm not picking a good time to talk about this. Okay, here's a little bit better of a time. Anyway, so Ocarina of Time made in 1998. Um, it stands out so much more than like PS1 games for the time. Like here, I was playing a PS1 game earlier today, one from my childhood that I had not that not many people probably played really. And this game came out actually three years uh, after Ocarina of Time. Um. The game is Scooby-Doo Cyber Chase. Like, I know it's not a AAA title, but the game was made in 2001, and the graphics are not the best. Like, comparing it to Ocarina of Time, it has so much, like, more, like, imperfections. It's it's kind of a fun game. It's a child's game. Like, a little 
designed for little kids. But when I was a little kid playing it back in like second grade, first grade, um, I, it was really difficult for me. Like I didn't understand it. Also, I couldn't read very well back then, so that was probably one of the reasons that I had trouble. Because that game was kind of one that I, I don't know. I only played it like once at my friend's, and he ended up giving it to me, cause he was kind of he was kind of a rich kid compared to me. Like my parents didn't have the best income at the time, um, but his parents they owned a business and I think helped with daycare or something like that. Anyway, we just learned the song of time. This song is. It's not as helpful in this game as it is in Majora's Mask, but it still it still helps quite a bit. Um, it's more of like a story progressor and song filler, I think, because like if you don't have if you don't have this song, there'd just be like a blank space, and no, not the Taylor Swift version. Honestly. It feels weird getting back into this, but it seems like it wasn't that long ago that I recorded. Because, I don't know. I'm really sorry that I've taken such a long break. Because I was, I was so excited about this channel. I'm still excited about it. Like, I have 170 subscribers, and that's just off of, like, those first 10 videos, I think. And I was looking at my views, and, like... What my first my first video has probably like 400 views, and it has uh, over 30 likes, which I think is awesome. It's just really cool, like seeing how much support I've gotten off of this channel, and it makes me feel bad that I haven't actually done much with it. Like having only nine, or t I guess I've like 11 videos on my channel. Sorry, I didn't mean to bump my mic, but one of those is a, an update video. <laughs> Which is bad. I should have actually not done the update video at the time that I did it. Because I wasn't actually returning around then. Because I'm returning now. And I'm actually going to be finishing the series and I'm going to do more on my channel. I actually, I do have a series planned out. I'm actually debating between two games right now. One is like a summer game and one's... They're actually both kind of summer games for me. From the same series, one's just uh, the next generation. Um, the first game I'm thinking of is, of doing, is Super Mario 64, which is on the N64, and then the second one I was thinking about doing was Super Mario Sunshine. Anyway, I haven't talked much about the game itself. Brandon, isn't that... It's, it's that legendary blade. Well, my after sword. The Master Sword. Yeah, don't want it. <laughs> That'd be so awful. Step into the light. This always looked... You know, I'm going to use this as like a thumbnail or something. If I could get a good view on it. This place... I used to have dreams of this place when I was a kid. I used to have dreams that uh, I was playing this game. And I was going to... I was in, I was in the Temple of Time, which we are at right now. And I came in here, and this door shut behind me, and I had the, the Master Sword was out of the pedestal, but I didn't actually have it. And if I paused the game, um, like, the game would continue, and there were re-deads inside of it, and they kept attacking me. It was a scary dream as a little kid. Oh. Bow, bow. Yeah, that does not work. You know, you have pretty eyes, Gandorf. Too bad you had your hair tattooed to your body. <laughs> it really looks like that. It looks like he just put a sticker on his face. He's like, I don't actually have earrings. Or earrings. I was looking at his earrings when I was saying that. I don't actually have hair, so I better put a temporary tattoo on me. That's like one of those temporary tattoos that you get on. <laughs> funny story. Um, Kind of funny. I think it's funny. One time in cross country, I have this. we had this friend, and he fell asleep on the bus, headed back. So, and we, like, after we had eaten at, like, Pizza Hut or something like that, and they had temporary tattoos, so we, like, bought one with, like, 50 cent tattoos, and then, like, a bobcat one, and we, like, walked out, or while he was sleeping, we, like, I don't know, I think we just had water with us, and we, like, 
wet it with a temporary tattoo and put it on his leg. And then we convinced him, we were trying to convince him that he put that on and then fell asleep. <laughs> it was really funny. But he eventually figured out that we put it on him. Anyway, I'm Rar, one of the ancient sages. Ages ago, we ancient sages built the Temple of Time to protect the entrance to the sacred realm. This is the Chamber of Sages inside the Temple of Light. The Temple of Light, situated in the very center of the sacred realm, is the last stronghold against Ganondorf's evil forces. He does kind of look like an old redneck. The Master Sword, the evil destroying sword that you pulled out of the pedestal of time, was the final key to the sacred realm. Brandon, don't be alarmed. Look at yourself. Wow. You age fast. Look, Brandon. You're big now. You've grown up. The Master Sword is a sacred blade which evil ones may never touch. Only one worthy of the title of Hero of Time can pull it from the pedestal of time. However, you were too young to be the Hero of Time. Therefore, your spirit was sealed here for seven years. And now that you are old enough, the time has come for you to awaken as a Hero of Time. Well, do you understand your destiny? Yeah, I guess. But remember, though you open the door of time, in the name of peace, Ganondorf, Grudu King of Thieves used it to enter his this forbidden sacred realm. He obtained the Triforce from the Temple of Light, and with its power he became the King of Evil. His evil power radiated from the temples of Hyrule, and in seven short years it transformed Hyrule into a world of monsters. My power now has only little influence even in the sacred realm, nameless Chamber of Sages. But there is still hope. The power of the sages remains. When the power of the sages is awakened, the sages' seals will contain all the evil power in the void of the realm. I, Raru, am one of the sages, and your power to fight together with the sages makes you the hero of time. Yawn. <laughs> the hero of time, chosen by the Master Sword. Keep my spirit with you, and find the power of the other sages and add their might to your own. <laughs> I was going to make a joke, but I kind of forgot. I was going to say... <laughs> wow, Link, when you when people watch my videos, it makes you age seven years. But it didn't really work out very well. I always thought this place looked really cool. Like, I didn't know if this was water or what it was. I imagine it is water. But, I don't know. Anyway, we received the light medallion. Raru at the sage adds his power to your own. Which, if you think about it, it really doesn't actually change anything. It's just kind of the sake of having the medallion. But the other stage is to save Hyrule. That voice was weird. I don't know why I did it. Temple of Time. Let's see where are we at for time. Because if we're not very far in, I might go ahead and grab a key piece to the uh, story. But if we're kind of low on time, then I don't want to. Brandon, we're back in the Temple of Time. But have seven years really passed? It looks like you won't be able to use some of the weapons you found as a kid anymore. Let's get out of here. Yeah, let's get out of this freaky place. Link, you have some skinny legs. Sorry, my th throat decided to be weird. Beautiful. I've been waiting for you here all the time. We'll do a <laughs> beatbox remix. When evil rules all, an awakening voice from the sacred realm will call those destined, destined to be the sages who dwell in the five temples, one in a deep forest, one on a high mountain, one under a vast lake, one within the house of the dead, one inside a goddess of the sand. Together with the hero of time, the awakened ones will bind the evil and return the light of peace to the world. This is the legend of the temples passed down by my people, the Sheikah. I am Sheik, survivor of the Sheikos. Girl, you crazy. As I see you standing there, holding the mythical Master Sword, you really do look like the legendary hero of time. If you believe the legend, you will have no choice. You must look for the five temples and awaken the five sages. What if I don't believe it? 
One sage is waiting for the time of awakening in the Flyer's Temple. The sage is a girl, I am sure you know. Because of the evil power in the temple, she cannot hear the awakening call from the sacred realm. Unfortunately, equipped as you currently are, you cannot even enter the temple. But if you believe what I'm saying, you should head to Kakariko Village. Do you understand, Brando? Uh, yeah, I do. So she won't leave this, so you can't come back here. Well, you can, but it's going to be useless if you do. So, what we're going to do now is go grab the item that she was saying that will... She didn't actually say, but it will let us access the um, area that was not... That, to the temple that was not accessible. Accessible? Why is it accessible? accessible instead of accessible like why do you not how come it's not said the same way anymore anyway oh the market has changed can I still buy fresh food from here probs not <laughs> some of this is scary I used to get like terrified in a way because when you come here like it's not it's, it's so different why is my ocarina on that side I do not like that Oh, I think I just kind of auto-assigned, didn't it? No, because that's where I had my old ocarina there. But, you know, so confused right now, eh? Yeah, it's a, it's these stairs are very slanted. Don't make much sense. <laughs> Man, wow, it's been... I'm, I don't even know anymore. Actually, one, this next dungeon that we'll be heading to later is actually one of my favorites in this in the game. I can kind of say that about like all the dungeons in the game, but actually I can't because I know one that's not one that I don't like at all. It's the one that's high on the mountain. <laughs> it's high on the mountain, or what is it? High, high on a hill? I don't know. It's, it's something, something that I wasn't paying attention. And here we will see Pose again. Have we seen? Th yeah, we saw them earlier. But if you go behind this gravestone and gravestone, tombstone, grave, whatever you call it, then you can go ahead and drop down into it. Uh, once you go here, you will see what the ghost of Dompe. Anyway, uh, Dompe has since died in these last seven years, and now he we're chasing him around in a grave. And he's throwing fire at us, so I guess I guess this is this karma. Is is that what we would call it? I don't know how I'm gonna do a different part of this later because right now, actually, damn it, Dompe, throwing your fire around. Uh, actually, yeah, we do have to come back here later for a heart piece. Um, and if we get this under a minute then you we, we will actually get the heart piece it's not actually all that difficult at least on the n64 version because everything controls so much smoother but even now you can kind of see it's, it's not that bad like we'll come back here later we have to get under a minute but we'll have a certain item by then that allows us to uh that allows us to get here a bit more on time. So just funny positioning. We're going to talk to him right here. The time of this race was 105. Hee hee hee, young man. You were very quick to be able to keep up with me. <laughs> As a reward, I'm going to give you my treasure. It's called the hook shot. Its spring-loaded chain will pull you to any spot where its hook sticks. Doesn't that sound cool? I'm sure it will be helpful to you. I live here now, so come back again sometime. I'll give you something cool. One more thing. Be careful on your way back. <laughs> I don't know. I immature. It's just it's just funny to see Link spawn on that chest right there. Anyway, let's go ahead and open this chest. Um, he already explained what it was. It's the hook shot. And now when Link opens the chest, he doesn't have to dive into it. We found the hook shot. It's a swing loaded chain that can cast to hook onto things. Blah blah. blah. Um, yeah, this is one of my favorite items in the game. I'd say it's probably my second, but it's it's basically in every Zelda game. Let's actually see what Navi's gonna say. Yeah, I don't care. Sorry, it's kind of a hoe. We'll use the Song of Time that we just learned with a treble clef with not enough lines. 
<laughs> recently when I've noticed that, because I didn't really bother to know what the like bother to learn about the treble clef. But those that's not enough lines on the staff. Anyway, uh, there's actually one last thing we'll grab here. Wait, actually. I think we can learn something too while we're here. So there's more in here than than it seems like there is. So there's a heart piece right here. I guess I can mark that off my list. I don't even have a list. If I d actually, I might have a list, but I'll have to go back through and figure out which ones I got and which ones I didn't. So, what? You got an ocarina? What the fuck? That reminds me of the time seven years ago. Back then, I mean, kid game and played a strange song. <laughs> Mess up this windmill. Oh, I thought that was my like the sound of my software glitching out. But it was just just the sound of the music box that he plays. That he's plays. He plays. <laughs> anyway, we just learned the song of storms. Even though it hasn't told us yet. You've learned the song of storms. Yeah, it just controls weather. It makes it rain and whatnot. Which actually, it'll be useful for a part in this game later. Anyway, um... I, this is going to be the end of the episode. Thank you, everybody, for coming back and watching me, even after these, what, like, four months, basically four months of me being gone. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.